How did you react to the exit poll on Thursday night? Um, it's funny actually, I think a lot of us were relieved, which is, which is strange isn't it, how losing 240, 250 seats, you're actually relieved. Um, but what it meant is that we can still be the opposition, we can still be an opposition. Um, anything lower I think than 100, I think it's, you're, you're, you're almost talking game over. Mm -hmm. But I think we just about held on. Um, but yeah, I would say it's relief, which is terrible when you think about it, isn't it? Which MPs are you especially sad to see the back of? Well, of course, my, one of my political heroes, Sir Jacob Rees-Mogg. Oh, Penny Morden. Look, none of these people are normal. Why can there not be a normal Conservative? Why do they all speak the same way? Oh, my political hero is Jacob Rees-Mogg. And come on, <laughs> literally. It reminds me, remember when we were watching the French elections and you just got this, this polar opposites, right? Where you saw the people in the streets celebrating the National Popular Front's victory. And they were all just people just wearing like t-shirts and jeans and hoodies, right? Just normal people celebrating a normal election result. And then you cross across to National Rally headquarters and it's all people dressed up to the nines, all in their dinner jackets and their evening dresses with their glasses of champagne at the ready. Of course, I mean, she was just absolutely brilliant, so, you know, in many ways for, for causes like the Royal Navy, still being a Royal Navy Reserve, I really respect her. Many MPs who are still, you know, in their reserve careers. Uh, personally, I was quite sad to see Liz lose her seat. Really? I, I was, yeah. I did vote for Liz uh, back previously. Um, I think, you know, that was um, unfortunate, but if you look at the, the vote split, you know, with the reform running in, in all of these seats... You say vote split, how about everybody hated us? Everybody hated the Conservatives. And the person who's to blame for the reason why most people hate them is literally Liz Truss. They hated her so much that they couldn't vote for her in one of the safest Conservative seats in the country. Again, just Tories delusional. Zero introspection. Oh well, it's just Reform UK, vote splitting, there's nothing else we could do. You destroyed the country, mate. And here you are, praising the person who made everything worse for your key voter demographic. Are you insane? That is, you know, how Labour has won lots of seats across the country. Uh, and I have Labour friends across the country as well that, you know, have got in now because of, because of you know, the reform vote. I think it was probably inevitable and I think that she was going to come under a lot of public scrutiny after what happened when she was uh, Prime Minister. But on a personal note, I, I'm sad to lose her because I think uh, some of the values that she had when it came to the role of the state and potential reform of the tax system are the right things if poorly implemented at the time. I think, no, but they're not, the, they're, they're just bad. They were bad. They shouldn't have been done. It was stupid. I mean, like, people hated you because you destroyed public services and you destroyed public services by not putting enough investment into them. Just slashing taxes on the role of the state is literally why you lost the election. It's why you, lo you lost the election because people do not trust you with the NHS. They don't trust you to have the amenities necessary to deal with the cost of living crisis, which are coming from the public sector and coming from the state. You're supporting somebody who's not only a moron and an idiot, fucking like vegetable IQ, because clearly his trust is vegetable IQ. You're supporting her for all of the reasons why you lost the election. These people are not going to get together to be able to be an electorally positive force over the next five years. The next five years, chat, mark my words, are going to be the Tories absolutely shitting themselves and Reform UK becoming the dominant centre-right party in politics. Or I guess there will... Op they will try and occupy the centre-right. They'll be a right-wing party, but they'll try and occupy the ground that centre-right people will vote for by essentially hiding their power level. What was really interesting was just, obviously we are very unpopular and we did it very unwell, but how little Labour got as a percentage of the vote. I mean, 33% is, it, it's, it's embarrassing. It's almost embarrassing as what happened to us. Almost, <laughs> you know. I'm glad you've got that element of self-awareness. Uh, oh, yeah, trust me. I'm very aware. Yeah, don't worry. I'm very aware of that. Yeah. Why did the Conservatives lose the election, in your opinion? Um, I think it, for two reasons. Um, David Cameron's centralisation. They fell into the trap that all elites do, that they are necessarily morally superior and correct, so they distance themselves from ordinary people. I don't just mean wealthy middle classes, a lot of working class people were members of conservative clubs and associations. Um, and I think that they succumbed to that. They failed to deliver on promises. I mean, obviously, if you're going to make a... I mean, I have plenty of criticism 
of the Labour Party, Anthony. Trying to claim that it's Labour councils going bust because Labour run them, and not because central government funding for local authorities has dropped by 45 percent since 2010 shows you just how like basic your level of knowledge on this issue is i hate to insult you but like not knowing that the conservative party did austerity for six years or eight years even up to until philip hammond got removed as chancellor like if you don't know that austerity cut council budgets i can't help you promise election after election failed to deliver it of course you deserve contempt well there's a whole litany of reasons why and the corpse is still twitching, so it's probably a bit too early to do the post-mortem anyway, but, you know. Um. Well, Daniel, why did the Conservatives lose the election? Um, I think that it, it was a lot of different elements building in. I think the fact that we were on our fourth term... I mean, look, 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 it's just the same. This is from the National Rally event, looking at the exit poll. Look, this is the same. It's the same people. It's just the same people. The physiognomy is just, it, it's the same for the fifth um, and that is something that is rarely if ever seen um, plays into it that was talked about today the fact that the smallest little details in people's life that realistically can't be blamed on the government <laughs> still do um, when someone's been incumbent for that long people just throw everything at them what are those things that can't be blamed on the government do you think um, small little things that boil down to local councils and devolved powers um, that have been pop holes in the road cash things like that austerity Yes, I suppose you could say that. Um, lots of different things. If people say, oh, I, I woke up and I haven't got any money in my account, forgetting the fact that they went and spent it all and they were silly with their money, they'll blame it on the government. There's all sorts of... Literally, literally, I know that we destroyed the country, we ripped apart public services, we immiserated people through supply-side labour market reforms that gave us a decade of wage stagnation so people are five figures short of money more than they would be. But actually, have you considered that it's not the Conservatives' fault that kids keep buying avocado toast? This little kind of scrotum, this kind of peeled fetus coming out here pretending he knows all about politics, never worked a real job or had a real life. Coming out here saying, well, actually, it's the kids' problems for eating too much, for, for spending too much on Netflix and all of the money that we gave them. Oh, there's the government. They, they blame in the government for them the fact that they are responsible with their money. Yeah, they will literally never learn. They will never learn. Of different things that, you know, isn't really the fault of the people in Westminster. But when someone's been in power for that long, it's them who get the, you know, bear the brunt of it. There's a lot of talks about the quangle. And literally, like, the poverty has skyrocketed amongst children in this country. Do you think that all of the parents just decided to stop feeding their children? Every single parent in this country who has children in poverty just decided at the same time altogether, we are going to make sure that the Conservative Party lose the election by not feeding our children to increase child poverty rates. Or maybe it's something to do with your policies that did that. Incredible, incredible. Well, I don't, I'm not sure I heard someone say the blob, but they meant the blob, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. How much of a danger is that, how much of a threat is that to conservatism, would you say? It's, it's a big threat to conservatism. And until we get, and when we get back into power, which we will eventually, we've got to understand that we've got to tackle it. We'll see how well this ages, chat. It is currently 5 to 11 on the 9th of July 2024. And this person has claimed that they'll get back into power eventually. Clip this and bookmark it. We'll come back to it in 2029, chat. We'll see. I mean, if you can't tackle that, we'll achieve nothing because the blob stopped too much and it, it stopped us doing the things that we wanted to. If Rwanda had been a success, we might have been in a different position. Again, just completely out of touch with reality. No, forget the NHS, forget the cost of living, forget the schools that were collapsing, forget every promise that we broke, forget all of the scandal and our failure to engage in proper, proper governance. The only two things that stopped us were the fact that we didn't get planes to Rwanda and a mythical blob in the background stopped us. It's just, they, they just can't, they can't even begin to comprehend, again, how they managed to get a massive electoral coalition in 2019. Boris Johnson had promised the public the end of austerity, investment in hospitals, building HS2, increasing benefits in line with inflation, all of these magical things of state investment. And now you're saying, well, actually, the problem was we didn't do Rwanda properly. You, you promised all of these things and didn't fucking do them because none of you believed in it. Not even Boris Johnson believed in it. He just thought he could say it to make himself popular because he's a narcissist. He never have any intention on following through with any of it. Honestly, just want to have a five-minute conversation with these people, just to find out, like, genuinely how out of touch they are.
And the thing is as well is that this is what they're saying on camera. They know that hundreds of thousands of people are going to watch these clips of Conservative Party members just admitting that they've never spoken to a real human being before. And they don't think that it's bad. They just they say, yeah, well, it's just obvious, isn't it? It's just obvious that it was the blob. It's obvious that it was Rwanda. That's our fault. That's our fault, you know, for not doing the getting rid of the blob. Yeah. The fact that they think that this is just kind of received wisdom, that they can just say it and everybody won't laugh at just how out of touch they are, shows you just how out of touch they are. There wouldn't be an, a, a space for reform to come into into the uh, in, into the political environment. There's no danger of then alienating more vote, like conservative voters who are more liberal in immigration. There wasn't a great love for the Rwanda policy. And I also wouldn't really have done very much that's, to tackle legal the, migration. There was no love because it didn't work. Because you were spending millions and millions of pounds on something that didn't work. Now, if they'd been spending millions of pounds and on it something that worked... Cruel. Cruel yeah. and unusual. Well, I don't know about cruel and unusual. It's very but cruel. It, but it, but it, it, it was certainly different. And all Because actually, you know, people would have gone and be processed aboard. And there's nothing unusual about that. It's happened in other countries around the world. Yeah, other people process their asylum seekers and the successful asylum seekers then come to the country after their claim is successful. The whole point of the Rwanda plan is that their claims would be processed in Rwanda and they would stay in Rwanda with houses that the UK public purse built. An absolute incineration of money. Those houses have already been built, by the way. World. And that's and the consequence of that is that it becomes a deterrent. So in itself, the Rwanda policy wasn't wasn't uh, necessarily something that was, um, as you say, cruel or whatever. But also reform. God bless them. Mm -hmm. They're a bit of a joke. I think I, so. I, I don't think so. I know so. I mean, some of them are lovely, um, but I, I mean, I would say that. I mean, structurally, I'm, a, I'm an association chairman, mm -hmm. and they don't have anything in regards to sort of structure. You know, I mean, they've got as much structure as my dining room table. I mean, it's like, good luck. Um, there is a, a genuine debate to be had. But honestly, it's crazy just how much of these people are just the Tory boy from the Harry and Paul sketch. And I was quite impressed that they were having it in that room. I mean, I came along just to see who was here and that kind of thing mm. and whether anybody would come to something like this at all. But I thought it very well attended. And I thought the intellectual level far higher than I was expecting. What were you expecting? The usual sort of banging on on ideological drums, using you know free trade, like that so, sort of thing. Um, but it wasn't like that at all. Mm. Um, so yeah, I quite enjoyed it. It seemed quite cathartic to me on the outside looking in. Um, well, well, not for me. I no. mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not cathartic. I, I still think uh, they're going to make an awful lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm that will rush the leadership election. I mean, no one wants to hear from the Conservatives. They should shut up for over a year, in my personal opinion. No one's interested. No one wants to hear from them. Uh, they've got to sort a lot of things out and they should re-emerge in a year or two's time. I mean, this is the most sensible thing that we've heard all video. Is that genuinely sensible? If all you do for the next year is publicly broadcast your cat fights in the background about the direction of the party and who becomes leader, you'll just become even more of a national laughing stock and you'll become increasingly irrelevant over time. Whereas if they try and you know get themselves sorted behind closed doors so that in five years' time they look more normal, then they might have a chance of being able to at least recover something electorally. That's just not going to happen. We all know that it's not going to happen. The kind of people who join the Conservative Party, they're all fucking narcissists. They're all stuck up their own ass. The idea that they'll be able to come together to be able to quietly sort things out, it's never happening. Never, ever happening. If they've uh, got a consistent philosophy of some kind. So, uh, I would say just a few, a few clear principles. The Conservative Party is a brand, and we are about low taxes, property ownership, um, low migration. Um, these are quite simple things. Actually, I would think have poor. You're not going to get low taxes with low migration. The biggest thing we spend taxes on are healthcare and pensions, and we've got an aging population. Once they retire, we will have to spend even more on the NHS and pensions, and we will have fewer workers. Who do you think is funding the pensions and the NHS? You could have low taxes with immigration if you just got rid of the NHS and the state pension. But that's not going to happen, is it? Popular consensus in the country. And 
we pretty much failed on all of those. You know, if I wanted to vote for a high tax, high migration, low house building party, I have hundreds, <laughs> loads to choose from. I've got more than, you know, more than a, a bag of M&Ms. Um, but the Tory party should be about trying to get young people like me um, trying to own a home. We, sh we need to build more homes. We need to encourage property ownership like Margaret Thatcher did. We need to encourage the economy to grow through low taxation and regulatory changes. Um, and you know, we need to be honest about it. It's interesting that he says, we want pe young people like me to own houses. There are lots of people who are young, who are your age, who are not going to be able to own houses, no matter how many of them that you build, and they have nowhere to fucking live. That's what happened when you sell off all the council houses. If we invested our oil revenues in a sovereign wealth fund like Norway, we could have way to have paying for our pensions without having to constantly be expanding the tax base. That's also true. We could also have done that with the uh, the oil wealth that we threw at private corporations for ages. That is also very true, Ben. You're absolutely right about that. Or we could have used that to build loads more council houses. I mean, you know, when I was growing up, migration was below 100,000. Last year it was 720,000. Now, you just need to do the maths here to understand that if you're building 220,000 homes a year, and you're having 720,000 people come in, plus population growth. I mean, there's no wonder young people are all very angry and turning to, well, other parties than mm. the Conservatives. Frankly, the Conservative Party has done as much good for young people as the chocolate teapot. Why did the Conservatives lose the last election? It just simply wasn't Conservative enough. I said that in an answer to, to a question. The, the, these were not sort of low tax, low regulation type of Conservatives. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're quite happy to, to have the, the OBR dictate uh, tax and spend policies, to have the Climate Change Committee to, to, to run green policy. Again, they're just going to lose. They're just going to continue to keep losing. The problem was is we had too much tax and public services weren't cut enough and we were too scared and we were too focused on climate change. Three things that the public all wanted, investment in public services and functioning NHS and investment in tackling the climate crisis. Like they're going to keep going down this road and it's going to cost them more and more votes over time, especially as our population ages further. They're quite happy for civil servants to run, run amok. We need to get back under political control in, in, in this country and things will start to improve. The MPs, or former MPs I suppose, associated with this movement, Liz Trust, Jacob Rees-Mogg, they all lost their seats. They did. Do you think that was a rejection of movements like this on a wider level? No, I just think it was a rejection of, uh, of, of the Conservative Party in general. And let's be honest, the campaign for the Conservative Party during this general election was pretty appalling. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have Rishi, you know, giving his announcements uh, in the pouring rain in, in, in Downing Street. I don't think he. I think the second day he visited Northern Ireland and went to the Titanic quarter, which was a omen if there was if there was nothing else. But the whole thing to do with the D-Day commemorations, just loads and loads of unforced errors, just gaffes. Not a particularly good professional campaign, uh, and, and that certainly certainly didn't help. How do you win the next election? Hard work, hard graft. Um, getting back down to the grassroots of the party, um, really connecting with our, our volunteers and local associations, the devolved parts of the party in different areas of the country. And I think a massive, massive element of it, which this today has, has you know, helped with a lot, and there's many different things that are doing this good work, drag the young people in. Get the young people to realize that if you want to grow up and have you know, strong finances, if you want to have good education, if you want to have a happy life, with a happy family and a strong and healthy future in a good country where everything is stable or st as stable as can be it's the conservatives that you need to vote again how they how can they say this with a straight face how can they say this with a straight face the time in this country when people were the most stable where people had the most opportunity to start a family were the most contented with the state of the living in the country this was in the post-war period this was during the social democratic consensus it was when you were doing the opposite of what you're doing now. The best time to raise a family was during the Attlee administration. <laughs> All the Tories have ever done is cause instability. Heath, Thatcher, Cameron, May, Johnson, Truss, Sunak. It's just total nonsense. It's just total nonsense, right? You want to have a look at a country which has stable, which has financial stability. It has people living in prosperity. We're living a good life with a good family. Go and look at... Go and look at fucking Norway, mate. Go and look at Denmark. Would they not just look at the last 14 years of government and see that that's all rubbish? Uh, I would argue against it. 
Um, I think that the, being the Prime Minister or being the governing party in any country in any time period is one of the few jobs I would say no man or woman could ever fulfil properly. Um, it's, it's an impossible job and I am confident in saying that with a fair amount of mistakes um, and a couple of quite bad mishaps we've done incredibly well and a Labour government would have done way way worse not that that's really a justification seems like you're trying to extrapolate a little bit there mate but yeah that was just a cavalcade of lack of introspection like no introspection whatsoever just reason why we lost is because all the things that we did that people hated we didn't do enough of yeah no mention austerity yeah no mention of austerity whatsoever Hey there, if you enjoyed the video, make sure that you like and leave a comment that helps the video out in the algorithm. If you subscribe and ring the bell, it'll let you know when I go live. I stream every day on YouTube and Twitch. You can also follow all of my socials down in the description. And if you want to support me in a more financial manner, there's a join button for membership to just 99p. So be a member on YouTube as well as a patron and there's some merch there as well. And hopefully I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.